Hello, how is it going? It is Fake Oak. I'm actually once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. We recently reached Masters, boasting a 73% win rate with Twisted Fate and Ezreal. If you haven't been following the channel for quite a while now, you would probably not know that Twisted Fate Ezreal is one of my favorite decks. It's one that I've used over the past couple of seasons to reach Masters with, and it's still performing just as effectively. The list at the moment, mostly looking the same. I'm choosing to run the most important decision to make here is three static shocks over cards like pilfered goods this is to prove to be consistent on ladder card draw some board control just a lot of consistency for that i'm also cutting salvage i'm using zap spray fin at the moment more consistency more cycle i don't want to be discarding any cards and i want to be tutoring the best i can to kind of make every game feel roughly the same and the decision making comes mostly the same but yeah, the deck's been performing super well. We maintained a 73% win rate. We went 31 and 11 overall, reaching masters. Without boasting too much, I would say piling this deck does require a little bit of skill. But, you know, I do have a deck guide. I recommend you guys go check that out. It's fully in depth. I'll be covering deck summary, a mulligan guide, and some gameplay. Everything that hopefully you need to know to take this deck as well for yourself and reach masters. I just want to mention I am streaming over on Twitch Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at 3.30 p.m. AEDT time zone. Please go check me out. Drop a follow. That would mean a lot to me. Also, subscribe if you are new here. We're going to have one game for you today. Pretty in detail. I'll explain some of the turns I have. And it was a mirror matchup, so it's kind of interesting to see. But after that, go check out the deck guide. It's going to teach you everything you need to know, guys. Have a fantastic day. <laughs> Oh, so we got a mirror matchup. Now in the mirror matchup, Yola Grifter is high value in this matchup. High value. Merchants, high value. Uh, but in the end, looking for a curve is also decent. A hand like this actually looks kind of powerful, especially going second. We obviously don't have a turn one play against the uh, potential Jagged Butcher that might come down, if that's the list he's running. But I don't mind Dreadweight. I don't mind curving into Petty Officer afterwards and make a rain aesthetic actually are not bad choices here. Oftentimes, I probably wouldn't consider keeping static, but just for the sake of the fact that we're going second, I actually don't hate it. I actually love drawing Jagged Butcher. It's really good. I might, so, so it might look like we're in a good spot at some points, but in the end, what really matters the most is hitting, is hitting the, uh, hitting the Riptide Rex is the best timing. Because we're going second, we're going to be the first person developing on turn 8, which makes it kind of scary for playing Riptide Rex. So what we kind of have to do here is actually set it up so we have a stronger board coming into turn 8 so we can open attack and then hopefully our opponent would be forced into playing Riptide Rex first and then we follow up with Riptide Rex. That's the ideal situation and something that we have to look to push into. I could simply play Make It Rain here. To kind of slow down the cake from getting any value. I still believe we should play our Dreadway Deckhand because it puts him in an awkward spot where he can't necessarily play uh he can't necessarily play Petty Officer unless he's the parlay version but that's fine. I'm glad he's the parlay version. We're gonna have a lot more value in our deck. So what he's probably gonna do here is he's going to open attack or he might develop the Petty. If he goes for this play, I just ignore it. I let the keg go down and I develop my Petty Officer. This just feels correct to me in many ways. The punish obviously is that he plays Petty Officer for a keg. Setting up for Make It Rain. But something like this is just like, fine. In this position, I don't mind just like kind of open attacking with these two. He kind of high rolled the one drop there. But most of the time, they're going to find a certain unit with a certain amount of HP. Uh, open attacking here feels great. We don't have Twisted Fate in our hand, which is a little bit of a problem. But this still feels generally okay. I wouldn't hate to see him develop Twisted Fate here. This is kind of interesting. He's, he's given us the opportunity to actually do nothing here and pass. I almost have to take it because I haven't got the twist of fate in my hand. He's looking for the punish, right? This is all mind games. I'm happy to pass here. That, that, that turn four is kind of important. This feels kind of 
really aggressive. I'm going to pass here still. He's going to play merchants here, right? Jagged Butcher. I think my best response currently is Yodel Grifter. So he's a salvage version. We can attempt to high roll the make it rain here. I'm gonna go for it. We high rolled the make it rain, which is great. Now, if he wants to play another merchant, I can punish with thermo beam. Cool. So we can definitely punish here. Then maybe him feels fine here. Now we have the stronger board. But he did yoink a black... Uh, he did yoink a jagged butcher from our deck, so... That's a little unfortunate. I think I should feel comfortable doing some value blocks here. We want to like maintain the best board we can and he's already like plundered me this turn. That little bit of damage I don't think is going to be relevant. And we still have a unit on board, so this is great. Um, this is pretty good. I think it can allow us to make some plays this turn. I don't really want to salvage. I'm still all about trying to maintain a board. I'm playing, I'm playing into a uh, Twisted Fate if he has it. So probably the open attack is correct first of all and then we can decide to play Merchant. There's high odds that he has a uh, twist of fate, so I have to really like do my best to play around it. I mean, at this point, I could consider not playing the Merchant. I also need to find some more cards in my hand. That's actually kind of funny to find, but I don't know if it's going to be playable this turn. I should probably pass here, right? Playing the Merchant's Greedy. I guess the real question to ask here is like, do I want to play around Twisted Fate? Ideally, no. I don't want to play this because if I play this, I have no response to Twisted Fate other than Thermo Beam, which I might want to consider saving for Riptide Rex. He's floating more mana than I am. I think this is fine. Unless he yoinked a 7 mana Thermo, uh, Riptide Rex from me, then it's pretty obvious what he's doing. This is a fine pass. So I'm probably just going to salvage here. I could also pass. Hmm. I probably have the worst hand than he does. I think I could salvage here. So that's kind of the reason why I dislike Salvage. The fact that I just like got rid of that, um... The fact that I just got rid of that Riptide Rex feels really bad. Knowing that I've only got two left in the deck and my opponent knows if he was paying attention. It feels really bad. Here's where I think Static Shock gets a little bit of value. I'm just going to go for the static here. Hmm. I probably just have to let that happen, right? That's four damage though. That is four damage. I need to force him to like spend more resources here. Oh, he found a Rex. But unfortunately, we're the person that has to play it first. So we can't actually play Rex here. As much as it sucks and I would love to, playing Rex could very much lose us the game. What I can do instead is like play Zap Spray Finn. Set up the zap, kind of threaten the open attack here. Hmm. 
Okay. I think we're still going to do this. Okay, what's his Ezreal at? His Ezreal is barely leveled. Now he's down to one card in hand. I'm sure there's going to be ways I can play this correctly. I could take a bit of a risky line where I go uh, the Merchant into the Jagged Butcher kind of stuff. And then Thermo Beam, the Ezreal. We're not going to have a clean activator for Rex, which is a bit of a problem though. But it might be a risk that's worth it because I can go Warning Shot, Merchant, Jagged Butcher. Three mana for Thermo Beam. He can't level the Ezreal. I might find something from the Merchant too. Set up a strong board state. Cool. I guess he surrenders because he's down to one card in hand. We're about to take over the board. Um, I don't think there was any deciding factors in that matchup too much. Just other than the fact that um, I think we managed our resources quite comfortably, and I think the static shocks proved to be a lot more effective. It kind of like it kept our hand size up. I think our yoinks were our yoinks were kind of below average. And um, he kind of like threw the Mystic Shot into my face for some reason, which I'm not sure if that was like really correct. But yeah, I think we played that mirror matchup quite fine. And uh, we didn't even get to our Rexes, but we were going to. Anyway, guys, as I said, um, be sure to go check out. Let me jump across here. Let me jump across here. Be sure to go check out the full deck guide where I just I break it down a lot more. We have a bit more gameplay. And yeah, I really recommend this deck. It's one of my personal favorites. I would say that I'm an advocate for this deck. I wouldn't say I'm like the godsend for this deck. I didn't originally craft it, but I've come to a point where I feel comfortable enough to talk about it, share the deck with you really comfortably, talk about the deck techs, card choices. And yeah, um, if you have any more questions about the deck, just drop them down in the comments. Don't forget to leave a like. So glad to have finally reached masters. We're going to see if we can go for some high ranks this season, guys. Have a fantastic day. I will see you soon.